Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. I'm Will Richardson, your host, and we're talking with Sergei Panaschuk in Odessa. Tonight we'll be discussing what it's like to travel from Odessa to Herzon, which has been the site, as many of you know, and anyone who follows the news will know, of uh, several very important events and is at the recent event and is at the epicenter of the Ukrainian uh, advance now. Uh, towards uh, towards the coast, uh, Sergey. How are you this evening? I'm um, good. Good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. And you were you were recently traveling with uh, with Mike Houlihan, our friend from uh, Aspen Aid, to uh, Harrison. Uh, what was that trip like? How do, how do you get there? Uh, and what's the actual travel from Odessa to Harrison like? Well, to get there, we used the uh, BlaBlaCar uh, bus. It's an application when you can find the right. Uh, it took us, on, uh, first we, we went to, to Mykolaiv, and it took us around two and a half hours or something because like the, the bus was very slow. And uh, in Mykolaiv, we, um, I got in touch with uh, my, my co colleagues from the Sunflower Project, it's American NGO. Uh, guys that are helping Ukraine uh, almost since since the beginning of the full full scale invasion, and with uh, these guys we went to uh, to, a, to to a warehouse in Mykolaiv to get some humanitarian aid, and then we went to to, to Kherson with them. Uh, to get to the Kherson, you need to pass a checkpoint, like really serious uh, checkpoint with lots of military, and they are checking the papers. Uh, checking checking everything which you have in the car, like uh, what what is your goal? Why are you why are you going there? To who you are going to deliver your humanitarian aid? And uh, we were in the children's hospital, and uh, in a, a few humanitarian um, in a few humanitarian uh, uh, aid centers. And sadly, uh, only two days after we went to one of the humanitarian centers, it was bombed. It was bombed uh, by the Russian artillery. It's totally destroyed. And uh, one person who was working in the humanitarian center was um, a, a, a rocket uh, hit his house. And I think I think he didn't make it. Uh, this this is a sad reality of uh, Kherson. But when we were there at that day, there were no 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 shellings. Uh, and we visit another humanitarian center, which was already hit before that. Uh, and two people got uh, two people died there in in fire, and uh, we also del delivered some humanitarian aid. And I, I talked to the to the guy to the Alex, uh, who was in charge of this center. Uh, to tell you honestly, like when we were the, the, with the, with the Michael, it was kind of a calm calm day in the Kherson, but uh, like uh, during the last days it has been shelled mercilessly and people are dying every day. So the other day, uh, a few days ago, uh, a doctor was killed in a hospital, in the Kherson hospital, and it was, uh, he was very young, it was his first work day. Oh no. Yeah. That's, you know, what can you say? Um, they, the the Russians are well aware they're shelling hospitals, aren't they? They are. They're, are they, they're targeting them, right? They're targeting everything. They're specifically targeting humanitarian aid centers. They're specifically targeting fire rescue departments. Uh, they're targeting bus stops. Like buses, they hit a church last, uh, like a few days ago, they hit a church. And when the firefighters came to, <coughs> came there, they hit again and they hit the firefighters. And uh, it's like when when we are saying, okay, so it's not Russians who are doing this, it's Putin who are doing this, you know, I mean, it's, it's actually, it's not Putin who, who pushed the buttons on this artillery, it's not the Putin who, uh, who load and reload these cannons? These are these are the people, like you know, ordinary, ordinary people, people soldiers, who, yeah, you know? who are complicit in this uh, uh, in this destruction of civilian. Uh, yeah. Okay. What 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 do you think Michael's reaction was? I haven't really spoken to him about Herzon, but trying to see through his eyes by what he was saying to you, as 
someone who's there for the first time, uh, what was his reaction to what he was seeing? Well, I, th I think he was he was fascinated with the trip because there is a lot of uh, like so there is idea of Kherson, right? I mean, uh, it's it, idea of Kherson is as a, as Kherson is a very dangerous city when people got killed every day. Uh, when uh, about the city that's been shelled mercilessly, but still you can see like you can see uh, people working there in the hospitals, uh, children being born in hospitals. You know, uh, you, there are, uh, there are not that many people uh, walking on the uh, walking the streets, of course. And uh, very interesting thing that that he he mentioned, uh, so, uh, like lots of people wearing vests. When they're outside, they're wearing a, a you mean a flak jackets, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially street street cleaners, they are wearing vest, but it didn't help them, like because also a few days ago, uh, people who were cleaning the street were, were were hit by the Russian artillery, and some of them died. Yeah, so it's but, indiscriminate and very dangerous. So no one should go to Herzon or any of these front line. You shouldn't go to any of these front line places. Uh, without realizing that it is a danger to your life. And that's why it's uh, best done by professionals. And you need to be very, very serious about any travel to these frontline cities, particularly now. This is a war unlike any other since perhaps uh, the Korean War and in the sense of the uh, extent of the front and the extent of the uh, violence. Thank you for watching and more frontline travel in Ukraine tomorrow night with Sergei Panashchuk.